I'm joined by Agustas and Lisette from Orange Click. Hi guys, how's it going? Hi Megla, happy to be here. Hi, hi, all good, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining us today and really excited to have Agustas here because usually Agustas is on the other side of the microphone. <laughs> So today, I think it was one of the rare occasions that we have Agustas here, and he's the um, inter interviewee. <laughs> so cool. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about a couple of things. Um, Lisette, you have a presentation for us, and you're going to be talking about customer relationships on Amazon, which are so important because Amazon is such a customer-centric company, right? They're just so focused on their buyers. So as Amazon sellers, of course, it's also very important for us to make sure that we um, uh, you know, cater to the customers really well. So excited about that. And then we're also going to be talking about Seller Fest, which is uh, your upcoming conference. And you've interviewed 45 Amazon experts um, for this conference. And it seems pretty exciting. You've got the who's who. Uh, of e-commerce and Amazon <laughs> speaking at the conference. So um, yeah, interested to know more about that as well. So first of all, why don't you guys uh, tell people about yourselves, your background, um, Agustas, why don't you go first? Tell us uh, you know, about yourself and what have you been doing? Yeah, sure. So I have been in the in Amazon sellers industry for the last four years. And four years ago, I jumped into uh, uh, the whole kind of uh, system with the first virtual summit in the industry. And since then, I was doing a lot of interviews with experts in the in the space. And uh, after a few years, I started to organize in-person events. And uh, yeah, basically events and uh, creating content on the YouTube channel of Orange Click is two main activities uh, where uh, kind of, I'm not an Amazon seller myself, but I'm trying to bring content for Amazon sellers and help them. So that's my background. Right, right. Awesome. Um, Lisette, what about you? So yeah, I really like what Augustus uh, has been doing for Amazon sellers. Uh, myself, I'm a strategic partner for Amazon sellers. So I started out as a VA for Amazon sellers and then quickly grew to, to be a store manager and to be like a business partner for the businesses to help to set their goals, manage the team, manage the store, so everything. And uh, this year I joined the uh, Orange Click team as well to give back to the community and to help uh, spread all the good knowledge all the different experts have. So I'm happy to interview different experts on the YouTube channel and as well for the virtual summit we are having now. OK, awesome. So we've got a few people watching. So guys watching, if you have any questions for uh, Gustas and Lisette as uh, uh, they present the, 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 the slides, uh, you can type them in the comments and then I will read out the questions for them. OK, so let's get started, Lisette. Do you want to share your screen and uh, let's go through sure. your slides? Sure, just a second. All right. So tell me whenever you are seeing my slides and I'm ready to go. Yep, let's do this. All right. So today, uh, as Megla already mentioned, we will talk about Amazon customer relations. And it's about how to manage the customer relations side for your business well and how to take good care uh, of your customers. Uh, because we have to remember that customers are the ones who are actually buying the products and paying for them. Uh, and they are also the ones for who you do all the hard work from like finding the right product idea to listing the product to managing the ads, doing everything in your store. So it really doesn't make sense if we don't focus a lot on the customers. Um, yet working with Amazon sellers, I have seen that a lot of sellers actually do the really minimal only required by Amazon when they work together with customers. So you can either take what I share with you today and apply it to your business and try to improve the customer relations side, or you can leave this information and then just uh, your com competitors will come and uh, take that and, and use that to grow their business. So first we will talk about a little bit about the importance of customer relations. And as you can see, Jeff is here uh, today as well. And throughout my presentation, he is here to um, provide some good insights he has shared previously about customers and uh, customer relations. Because I think all Amazon sellers know that Amazon is super famous for customer-centric approach. Um, I think they understood that from the day one. So, and I think today they are still like one of the most um, 
customer-centric companies in the whole world. And as they like to say themselves, they're not just only focusing on the customers, but they're actually obsessed with them. So it's, it's going like one step ahead. And uh, today I, I want you to make think about how you manage your customer relations side and why you should uh, try to find areas for improvement and why you should upgrade your service quality. So first of all, of course, customer expectation have risen. This means that throughout the years, customers have started to expect more and more because all the bigger companies like Amazon or Netflix are uh, showing the way. So you have to know that customers uh, who you had perhaps like four or five years ago are not with the same expectations than they are today. Then communication with your customers really helps to build trust in your brand because uh, direct communication, whether it's through messages or just replying to the reviews or feedback is really helping the customers to build picture about your brand. So you want to make sure that this communication side looks really good so that more and more people would be willing to try out your products without knowing you or your brand before. Then what's super important and really a game changer for Amazon uh, businesses, it's really important to have uh, not only positive reviews about the products, but also about the service. Um, and here you can go to your like listing pages and see like how many reviews today you have that complement not only the product, but also the service, because it's super good uh, if you stand out by having reviews commenting both of the things because it helps you to set apart from the competitors because I can say that most of the companies don't have not too many um, positive reviews that comment also their service. And I have seen this uh, to be huge uh, help to help to convert uh, page viewers to actual uh, buyers. And of course, uh, word of mouth is a really powerful tool for uh, acquiring customers and it's actually said it's one of the most uh, trusted uh, marketing uh, ways as well because it, it doesn't only apply to e-commerce or Amazon but it's everything we do in our daily life because uh, I think everybody of us uh, have asked our friends about um, like which movie they recommend to watch or which book they recommend to read so everything is going like through word of mouth. And that's very important to acknowledge that your brand is what actually people talk about your brand and products with their family and with their friends. So let's now move to the first uh, section or the first part of uh, customer relations in Amazon, which is the buyer seller messages. So I have worked uh, on Amazon for four or five years. Uh, daily also worked a lot on the customer side and I have been testing different approaches for uh, Amazon customers. And one of the principles has brought a lot of success. And this principle is always exceed customer expectations and over deliver. And what this means is that you have to work equally hard with all types of customers. You have to work with the ones who seem to be totally happy with your product. You also have to work with the ones who are like 50% happy and then have some questions or hesitation about your product. And also with the ones who are totally unsatisfied. And I have seen that one of the most uh, common mistake Amazon sellers are doing is that they don't work with the customers who are neutral or who have like positive experience because they are just thinking everything is fine. They like the product. They also assume they will leave a positive review. And perhaps some sellers even don't reply to some of the messages uh, customers are sending. For example, if they only send like a thank you note or something short, but it's definitely not the way to do it. And today we have some self-check questions. So first questions are routine related, uh, which you can ask yourself to, to better understand what is the level of customer relations you are providing to your customers. So what we have here is that, for example, you can ask yourself and brainstorm together with your team. Do you have a fixed schedule to work on incoming messages? Like, do you have a system for that? Also, what is the average response time for incoming messages? Here, I want to highlight that most Amazon sellers know that by the rules, you have 24 hours to reply to incoming messages. But what I suggest you to do is always reply as fast as possible because it's the first connection point between you and your customers. And you want to surprise them positively from, from that moment because 
even if they have some problem or, or even if they are happy, then still try to um, surprise them positively because in US, for example, because I have lived there a couple of times for a summer period, I know it's often very tiring and time consuming to get help and support, especially when they tell you to wait on the line and provide all kinds of details and information and numbers before you actually get help. Then if they just receive a reply from you within like a couple of hours and actually receive a reply which, which gives them already information or some kind of solution, it's, it's a big surprise for them and they're more likely to be a, a repeat customer and also leave a good review. And of course, you can ask yourself um, how often do you use the no, resp no response needed button? Um, yeah, I won't uh, stop here for very long, but I, I, can, I can tell you right away that you shouldn't use it too, uh, too often. So next set of questions is uh, quality related. So do you take each message as an opportunity to receive a positive review and get the repeat customer. Remember, these are not just random messages, they are actually connection points. So you have to use each message, whether the customer has sent it before um, making the purchase or after the purchase, take it as an opportunity to have a good feedback and a happy customer then is customer always the king in your communication thread meaning that you always try to make everything to make them feel good and are you are you creative and with problem solving attitude so this one is also very important and they really call all the sellers up to be super uh, creative because whatever the reason is why customers are not satisfied try to do everything you can to make them feel good um, if necessary, apologize, but apologize from the heart. If the mistake was done by Amazon, for example, there were some shipping issues, then explain that to the customer, uh, but still do everything you can by yourself and by your side to make them feel good and make them feel uh, like you're really there for, for them. Don't just direct them to contact Amazon uh, customer support. So the next uh, part is product reviews, which are definitely um, customers' favorites. Everybody knows that. So here again, take the same pr principle of exceeding customers' expectations to here. And I definitely suggest you to take those couple of moments to reply each product re review you receive, also to the positive ones, because you want to show your brand from really uh, customer friendly side and uh, if your product listing is well optimized for example you tell your brand story in the EBC content or throughout your listing then if the customers see that you are actually there for them and actually provide information and take the time to share their happy moments but also deal with their problems then that helps to build your brand reputation and that's a good way to show that there are actually real people behind your product and re behind your company, which makes them more trustworthy against your um, or towards your products and make them uh, purchase your product as well. And we, when we go to the questions, then regarding routine, uh, do you have a fixed schedule to work on received reviews? Uh, you, sh you have to have a system and not to have like a messy thing going on that you sometimes answer to the review, sometimes not. Then do you have a set, uh, have you set up a system to work with negative reviews? Uh, that's a very important point because um, dealing with negative reviews can take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. And you really want to be sure that you don't forget to take care of your customers. So having a system is uh, very important. And also do you collect product development ideas from your customers? Uh, that's also a very good thing regarding to product reviews. And when we go to quality related questions, you can ask yourself to, to better understand how are you managing your customer relations? Then one of the first questions you can ask is, is the style and quality of responses uh, constant for all review replies and for all your products? Also, do you engage with your customer and show you really care? So one tip is here is to always reflect what customers uh, are saying in the reviews. So when you write the reply, take the information they add there. For example, sometimes they don't provide a lot of information, but oftentimes they offer you, for example, they tell like for who they purchased the product, how they are using the product, what they liked, what they 
didn't like so much. So take that information, and when you're writing a reply, then add those lines into it. Try to start like a communication thread with them regarding to that. Don't expect them to reply to your uh, reply that you were writing initially for the review. But the thing is, when customers are going through the reviews, they, they see that you are there and they see you take time to actually read those reviews through and you just simply don't write like uh, a short thank you uh, in the comment for all of the reviews. And when writing uh, replies to product reviews, then also it's important to ask yourself, are you providing any valuable information for your customers? For example, you can ha uh, add information about different tips or different hacks, or make just some jokes regarding to uh, your product uh, if, it, if it's appropriate, because uh, you want to show that you're really friendly, you're professional, but you're friendly and you're really there for them. So the third part is uh, customer questions. I think uh, customer questions are often left uh, without attention. And uh, one reason behind that could be that the customer questions uh, is not enabled correctly in your seller central, because usually sellers have to receive uh, or are, are receiving a message from Amazon whenever a customer has submitted a new question. So you get this email and there is a link you can click on and that will direct you to the page you can actually write the answer. So I know a lot of sellers don't receive those uh, questions uh, or those messages with the questions. So if you haven't seen that kind of email for a while, then I would suggest you first go over to your product detail page, see if there are any questions that you are not aware of, and then go to your Seller Central settings and try to set the right email to receive those notifications. And if you are still not receiving those emails from Amazon, then just reach out to uh, Seller Support and tell them about the issue and they help to, to solve that. Um, and also, what's the reaction speed to answering to new questions? So here, um, I want to say and, and bring out that customer questions can be really generic, but they can also be um, specific about your product. And what customers are often doing is that they are submitting the same question to different brands at the same time. And oftentimes they choose to go with the product uh, whose brand answered the question the fastest. So it's definitely a good idea to have a really good and fast uh, reaction speed. When we talk about quality related questions uh, you can uh, brainstorm about is that uh, do you use the reply to the questions as a way to tell more about your product and company? The thing is that customers, customer questions takes uh, a good room on the listing page and you want that your uh, replies to questions pop out for the customers so that they would stop there and they would read more of uh, the questions and also more of your uh, replies then are you 100% honest? So one of the main things I have seen across different listings and, and uh, when working with different sellers is to think that customers often ask the question, where is this product manufactured? And as we know, oftentimes the answer is China, but nobody wants to say it. So a lot of times when you go to a product listing, you can see that all, all the other questions are answered really well. And whenever this question comes up, there is no reply there is like nothing. So definitely go ahead, uh, give that information. If it's China, then tell them that information. But what you can do is that you can add more information about your brand, your company, and your brand values and your mission so that when customers are reading your reply, they're not only focusing on the uh, manufacturing country, but they're actually focusing more on your brand and that makes you more trustworthy. And again, you can ask yourself, are you providing any additional valuable information? So when, whenever people have questions, for example, about your product size or whatever, then don't just write the centimeters or the inches, but, or try to add something more there. And um, say, say, for example, if it's something with the small size, you can add information that, okay, this is that amount centimeters and it's super good uh, because you can take that uh, with you in a suitcase to when you go traveling or whatever. So try to build some kind of picture uh, for what reason this product feature is good for. And the last part of customer relations is the seller feedback. Um, in my opinion, uh, managing and working with seller feedback is probably one of the most easiest part of managing customer relations for Amazon businesses. 
So here again, have a set system and schedule to reply uh, to seller feedback. Again, I recommend to reply to all incoming seller feedback because uh, whenever customers are clicking on your seller name on the product listing, they are directed to next page. And one of the first things customers see there is the section of seller feedback. And they don't only see the seller feedback customers have left, but they also see your replies. So why, that, why this is important is that, for example, when somebody is in a bad mood and wants to leave you a really bad review because, uh, or feedback because your product didn't work well or the shipment was delayed, they will go there, they see how you have communicated previously with all the other customers. And after that, the customer might decide to write you a direct message instead of leaving a bad feedback or they can leave a feedback stating that they need your help and could you reach out? So that's also super good uh, thing to think about and to follow. Uh, and when we go to quality related questions, then definitely go ahead and check, do you provide different reply for each customer feedback? Um, here, I don't mean that you have to generate like thousands of different uh, types of replies, but just don't use the simple thank you, which will seem really robotic and not really human-like, or try to play around again, similarly to product reviews, try to play around with information customers are providing to you and just try to be uh, playful. And, and one important question here is also the fact, is customer always the king when you reply to the complaints and negative feedback? Because even if you know the mistake wasn't done by you, don't try to blame the customer or somebody else. Um, make sure that you are very helpful, really kind, and really giving those positive vibes to the customers. So today I only shared like um, a couple of questions you can ask yourself, and I'm sure if you start to think about um, those questions, you will come up even uh, with more questions you can uh, think about in order to find uh, areas of improvement to manage customer relations. And uh, my suggestion is that when you don't know what to do or how to deal with customers, then think what would Jeff Bezos do? And if you don't know what would Jeff do, then I suggest you to uh, research uh, his statements regarding to customer relations and also why Amazon is uh, putting customers on the number one spot uh, in their priorities. And that will give you some information. And I will now read one Amazon statement that I find uh, to be very important. And it goes like this. Leaders start with customers and work backwards. They work hard to earn and keep customers trust. And although leaders pay attention to competitors, they obsess over customers. And I love this point. And I have kept it in my mind like throughout all the years, uh, whatever I'm doing at Amazon, and I suggest uh, all the sellers to do the same, to really work together with the customers and really uh, be obsessed with them. So thanks a lot. I hope there were at least a couple of points to take away from my presentation. And if anybody has questions, then uh, you can reach out to me through my website, lizetlist.com. So thanks a lot. Awesome. That was great information, Lisette. Thank you so much for that. So Kamra is actually saying, <laughs> thanks so much for this. This info is gold. <laughs> I'll have to come back to watch as I have to do a school run. Yeah, this was really good information because um, it's very confusing. And, you know, of course, there are no straight guidelines from Amazon on how to manage these things. So it's good to hear, you know, from someone who's been doing this for so long. So but tell me something, Lisette, like how do people how should we go about getting reviews like positive reviews, especially if, um, you know, sellers can't really directly ask for reviews and messages. Do you have any suggestions on how to mm -hmm. encourage yeah, buyers? That's a really to good question. And the thing is with managing customer uh, relations in on Amazon platform is that you have to be like super creative because we know Amazon has tons of rules. Um, again, they are changing the rules by November, I think. So you always have to make sure that you have some kind of principles mm -hmm. to follow, but also that you follow all Amazon rules. So when we go, um, and talk about like how to get positive reviews. Of course, uh, you just can't go uh, to the messages and start pumping the customers to say, okay, leave a good review because we really can't do that. So here, um, 
I recommend to use the same principle I explained before, which is exceeding customers' expectation. And um, I'm trying to bring one example. For example, if customer writes you, uh, let's say there is like small defect with the product. It's like nothing big. Uh, it doesn't influence the way the product is used, but customer is letting you know about it. So what most of the sellers would do, they would probably say, thank you or sorry. Um, they wouldn't uh, issue any refund or anything or they would issue, let's say, a couple of dollar refund. But it's like, it doesn't give like any emotions for the customer. Instead of that, I would suggest to go forward, like one step ahead and uh, write back to the customer first, saying that you are very appreciating the fact that the customer reached out and you can tell the story about how customers have been um, very satisfied with the product quality before and you haven't had that kind of issue before because you are having like third party inspection going on and everything. And you also say that instead of just like issuing a small refund, you're ready to send them a new product. So this will be the surprise moment because nobody expects you to send them like a brand new product if the product is almost fine, there is just like small defect. So that's already something that they see that is different from how other brands have been taking care of them. And how you can do, do this is that you can actually ask them to, Let's say if it's a visual, visual defect, you can ask them to send a photo. So that's a good thing uh, before like sending the new product. It's good for, for two things. First, you can verify if there's really that defect they are talking about, because we know sometimes customers tend to, yeah, I don't want to say lie, but they know that some, some of the companies are uh, giving out like new products easily, but uh, Actually, in my experience, I haven't met that uh, a lot, so so I wouldn't worry about that a lot. Uh, so yeah, ask for the photo. Uh, if there's really a mistake and you can see in the future um, more and more customers have the same kind of mistake then or defect, then this definitely shows that you have quality issues. But the second thing is that the customer is feeling that they're actually helping you. And the way you express their, that they are actually helping you to make sure everything is fine, that the quality is great. They are super happy to take the photo, to send it to you, they feel good. So that's the emotion we have, we try, we want to have. And then you, have, you, you continue with the communication and afterwards, because they feel so good that they helped you, they like the product, they are super satisfied with the service, they're more likely to, to leave you that review. That comments both the product and the service. Mm. Right. So also, let's say a customer has just sent a very short message to the seller, maybe just thanking them. Is there an opportunity to start a conversation with the customer in such a situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, one common thing is that when you ask in your automatic follow-up uh, message, for example, please let me know if you received the product and then the customer only writes back like, yes, or <laughs> yes, I received, thank you, or something like this, then yeah, there's like, it seems like there is not like a lot of room to start the conversation. Um, but what you can do here again, you have to be creative. I think for me, it's just, the thing that I have done it so much and I, I, I was responsible for customer relations directly for years. So I have tried to, you know, practice the thing, how you, how you work with this communication site. But for, for example, what you can do is that instead of asking just like, how was the delivery or how do you like the product? Let's say if it's a garlic press, um, ask the question like, do you like the product? Are you satisfied? But then again, ask something more like playful. Ask like, what are the dishes they are um, they are thinking of using the tool to prepare, uh, or have they already used the tool? And you can add like something that in the month of September we are collecting that feedback uh, because we want to add like a recipe book in our product packaging. Uh, like later this year, so we would really appreciate your insight and your feedback. Then again, customers know that, okay, you don't only ask for the review, they feel like your actual actual, actual um, company, like doing like actual product development uh, process. So more likely they, are, they, they will reply to you. And again, you get this like good communication going, uh, which mostly will make this person to leave you a positive review afterwards. Right. And this is within TOS, right? There's nothing wrong with just asking for mm -hmm. um, how they use the product. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not 
the, the main thing that you need to be aware of is that you shouldn't ask for a positive review. Exactly. Correct? So, so everything you do is that you, you actually never uh, say, say it out loud or write it down. Like, can you leave me a positive review or I would happy or even just not the, like a neutral review. So you try to just keep this communication really like you want to use the sales um, sales tactics, but without them actually knowing you're trying to sell, sell, uh, sell them this idea of leaving a review. And that usually works very well because it will make your uh, brand uh, stand out from the rest because what most of the companies are often doing, not only on Amazon, but other places as well, they're only asking you, can you leave feedback? Can you review my product? Help my small business. So it's like you, you want to stand out. <laughs> right. So guys, if you have any questions for Lisette, uh, type them in the comments. Uh, Margaret is here. Margaret is saying <laughs> hi. Hi, Margaret, Kevin. How are you guys doing? <laughs> okay. Also, how often do you think sellers should check their messages? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. I think it's up to like sellers' preference. But again, I would say that having a system is very important because um, like when you're running like different sides of your Amazon business, you don't want to be all over. You want to have like a set schedule to work with messages, to work with reviews. And uh, what seems to work really well is checking the inbox twice a day. So if you have some messages like coming in in the middle of the day, don't still keep your focus on the things you were supposed to work during the daytime. But of course, if you are just like going through the messages and you're seeing like somebody with really bad emotions or really bad experience, you can like reply right away. It would be the best to do. But other other than that, twice a day, like in the morning, in the evening, that's uh, that's that has approved to be good. OK, right. And you also said uh, we should maybe add some comments to the positive reviews uh, that have been left. So what other ideas do you have for people to say? I mean, except for just saying thank you for the review. Hope you like the product. You know, mm -hmm. what else can can people say to reply to those positive reviews? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, it, it all comes down to what the persons have provided, like what information they have provided in the review. So, for mm -hmm. example, um, yeah, I try to come up with a couple of examples. So, let's say uh, somebody says, "I bought this garlic press for my mom." then you take that information and you say, oh, thank you very much. I'm super happy you're excited and hope your mom will benefit from using the tool. By the way, uh, if you see her, definitely give her this awesome garlic sauce recipe and you add this recipe down there, so something like this. Or um, if somebody asks or writes something funny, you can try to be playful with that information again. Uh, then sometimes there are um, questions related or like reviews related using the product. Uh, for example, maybe there are difficulties to use the product in a correct way. Uh, then instead of just saying, yeah, try to read the instructions, write everything down again, like give those tips how to use the product better. Take the time to provide that information because um, yeah, for us, it seems that, okay, you have the package, you have the insert, you have my follow-up email. But I mean, <laughs> if they already came down, left the review with the, with these questions, they need help. And the best thing you can do is that you provide all the information again, even if it's exactly the same information you, pro you provide it again. Right. Often also what happens is that there are product reviews that are left in seller feedback. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, come on, there's such a nice positive review and you <laughs> left it in the seller feedback. But is there anything that can be done with those reviews or mm -hmm. you just kind of let them be? Yeah. Another funny thing is that when people are uh, leaving like uh, wrong reviews, <laughs> so they, yeah. they review like garlic press, but say they, these shoes match me so well, like with my outfits and stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, again, <laughs> definitely reply to those reviews as well whether they're product reviews or seller feedbacks, because you can you don't have to pretend it was about your product, make a joke about it, and other people will notice that as well. Uh, but regarding uh, leaving good positive uh, product reviews to seller feedback uh, section, uh, what I, I used to do like a couple of years ago, and I think which was quite common back then, like four or three years ago, was to write to those customers and ask them to transfer, uh, like saying, hey, you were leaving a good, uh, 
review or feedback, but it was like in a wrong place. Can you can you add it as a product review as well? Because it, it, the product review should be about the product and the seller feedback should be about the seller uh, services. Uh, so that was something sellers were doing back then. But since Amazon has really limited the, the amount of messages you can exchange with customers, uh, actually we haven't done that or I haven't used that um, a method anymore with the sellers because you don't want Amazon to block the opportunity to send uh, messages and it's worth it's not like worth risking because you don't want to be uh, without sending messages I think it could be like two weeks ban or even like a month ban I have received for one seller so it's it's not worth it right okay and um, what are some what are some advice you have for people when they are sending messages to um, you know, to, to their customers, like what are some things that they should not do at all? Like some no-nos, mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. they should avoid at all costs. Mm -hmm. So we need like, when we talk about like, let's say automatic follow-ups, then I think there are like a lot of things you have to avoid and you can take all that information out of like Amazon uh, rules pages as well. But one of the things I have seen um, Amazon sellers doing when replying like incoming messages is that if there's like an issue that is not the seller's fault, they try to uh, defend themselves and say it was a customer mistake or it was a Amazon mistake. So you don't want to accuse the customer or like basically anybody, you can always explain the situation, like why this happened, what are the options of solution, but you should always uh, be super nice and helpful. And even if this, let's say one customer is writing you several times about like with the same question even, and you don't have like new information to give them, still make them feel like you're actually personally working with them. So like, like sometimes you have to come up with like more creative things. Let's say, like, let's say there is like no manager in your company or perhaps doing your Amazon business alone, but you can always, always write to them that, okay, we're actually taking care of you and your case. And I forward your case to our uh, customer relations manager and I'm, I'm waiting his feedback or news from him. So the customer really feels that there is like some work going on. Well, you're actually working on it, but you make it more, more like, um, like it's a big issue in your company and like everybody in your team, uh, regardless of the size of your company are working uh, on this issue. So that's a really important thing. Right. Also, do you have any suggestions on how to manage negative reviews and in, in terms of like, are there any systems that can be set up to mm -hmm. uh, you know, work with negative reviews? Mm -hmm. uh, that's also a good question. Uh, one of the easiest things sellers can do is that they set up like a Google uh, sheet. Uh, so they add all the, whenever like they receive a negative review, they add all the information they have about it in the sheet. So they always have lists uh, of the negative reviews they have received. That's for two reasons. One, because they can keep all the information in one place in order to try to solve those uh, feed, uh, th those reviews. But second, uh, if they see a pattern of uh, the same kind of negative reviews, let's say regarding to product quality, then again, they see that, okay, we have to act. That's especially important when you already have like a bigger store. And let's say there is one person only working with customer relations and perhaps yourself as a business owner, you're not involved daily. So you even don't know what's going on exactly in the reviews. So it's very good if you have that one place to come you can see you can go through uh, all those negative reviews by the product but in order to like solve I mean it's really complicated topic uh, sometimes you have the customer name or you have some kind of information so you can uh, reach out to them or you can uh, like connect their uh, negative review uh, with the email perhaps they had already sent before so you know who's that person um, whenever you know who's the person who uh, was um, having this issue and who was leaving a negative review. Here goes the same principle. You really can't ask them to um, solve or upgrade their review or change their review or something like this. But again, what you can do is that you try to exceed their expectation to you try to provide super good service. Uh, I don't know, sometimes even send like not only one product or two products and, and tell something good, for example, what I have used is that whenever there is like a product that just simply doesn't fit, that is okay, but doesn't fit, uh, we always suggest uh, the customer, you can give that to your friend or give that to your family member who really needs it as well. Just take it, just use it. And these again, great like positive emotions. And a lot of customers have gone uh, back to their initial negative review and changed that. 
and they have just added that the seller reached out, they offer such a good service, they are such a good people, uh, they really tried to help me, they even sent me like a new product, etc. So again, you use the same principle here. Right, that totally makes sense. So Augustus, okay. what do you think about managing customer relations? <laughs> So are you, for me, it's super interesting actually to ask Augustus, because I know you have been ordering from Amazon. So you have been in the customer role a lot. So what you have seen, um, how customer or how Amazon sellers are communicating with uh, the customers? From any kind of support service, is it a software or online service or Amazon? I'm expecting like very fast answer. If I'm contacting uh, Amazon directly with some, you know, account issue or if they are selling the product, I'm really pleased to know that I will get answer like very soon within like 30 minutes, two hours. But when I'm writing, it's not it's not that easy to find the way to write to an Amazon seller. Not everyone knows that it is product sold by s third parties, but I know that and when I write, Sometimes I, I'm kind of, I know that they have 24 hours to respond and I'm kind of still, I would love to get the response very, very fast because now I'm searching for the product and maybe the measurement was not clear. And I want to know the answer like within the next 30 minutes so that I can make a decision. And of course, uh, so, but in any kind of service, I prefer very fast uh, turnaround. And this is what I try to do also when we write, we get emails, we try to respond very fast. So for me, the most important is the speed. Yeah, and I think uh, why the speed is very important is that people are now more encouraged to write, let's say, even myself, I have written to companies in Facebook uh, about like a product they are selling online to get like extra information. And if they don't reply to me and the other company does, I'm more likely to buy from the other company. But uh, Augustus, are you often leaving like product reviews and seller feedback as well? Uh, do you re receive like any special emails from the sellers or from Amazon and do you do that? Oh, so uh, I used to be an Amazon reviewer in German marketplace about four years ago and I reviewed like 250 products oh. uh, before all this was not uh, allowed by Amazon anymore But <laughs> for the sellers. For me, I don't care as a buyer. But now uh, I'm like, I know that it's important for the Amazon sellers and uh, sometimes I have a mood like once in three months and I sit down and I maybe make reviews for like, you know, Amazon has a list somewhere, the last purchases. So I just go through them and mark them and write quickly reviews. But it's not that I'm like rushing to write reviews. And I do get this, I think uh, what sellers are sending with a request a review button, but I'm just, I don't even open them. I, I know that I will not write review now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Amazon sellers. <laughs> but if I, if, I, yeah. if I was unhappy, then for sure I will write. I will make one star and then uh, <laughs> usually a Chinese seller will contact me and will try to back to remove the and I tell them you are doing against the TOS. You cannot ask me to review. <laughs> And then they offer to send a new product or something. <laughs> so they, they don't know with whom they are messing with. <laughs> yeah. But actually, uh, recently I play with these sellers because, um, I mean, they, very often uh, sellers like to put, we have 12 months guarantee or warranty, you know, or two years. So recently, like a few months ago, I ordered some rubber bands for training. And mm -hmm. after a few months, after like, five months it broke I don't know why maybe I was too strong pulling them <laughs> and I uh, I wrote to them uh, you and I searched for the box I still had original box and I found the card like we give 12 months warranty okay so I uh, wrote to them I said like look it broke and I sent a picture and you said it's warranty what, what shall we do now and they said oh we can refund to you some dollars because it was a package of four pieces and one piece broke, so they wanted me to refund like, you know, $6. I said, <laughs> for $6, I will not be able to replace, to buy a new one. And then they send me a new package, a new package, yeah. uh, being exactly. afraid to. That, that, that's yeah. exactly what I meant when, when I talk about like exceeding customer expectations, because if they offer you like four, five, six dollars, because what often Amazon sellers do, if they have like a package, they just divide the product price uh, by like five or four, how many pieces you have, and they only want to uh, transfer you back 
the small yeah. amount of money. So it doesn't leave you to feel very good about it or feel you excited because you should feel excited and <laughs> and like um, yeah, like that that they have taken a good care of you. And, and plus they promised 12 months uh, warranty. So exactly. if there exactly. is such promise, then fulfill it or yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Also, what do you do about buyers who leave, uh, you know, reviews about the size? You know, they say, "Oh, this is too small. This is too big." But the size is mentioned there clearly. Did you not read the, you know, the description, mm -hmm. or why did you get the, <laughs> where did you buy the product in the first place? <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the thing I always say, like to to all Amazon sellers who are like starting out, or even to the ones who are already experienced. The thing is that it doesn't matter how well your listing page is composed, like how good photos you have, how good infographics you have, or how good bullets you have, or in how many places you have brought out the size. The thing is there will be customers who don't read that information or simply read it wrong or with a hurry. So you always have that kind of persons. And I think this is just like one of the things to consider before you go into the business of selling uh, products with, with different sizes. Uh, but what you can do, um, I have been working with products with different sizes. I mean, it's super doable. Again, you just have to provide really good customer support and do all those small things I talk about during my presentation. You uh, try to educate them throughout your listing page. Uh, if somebody asks a question about like which size I should get, you just uh, don't reply about their size, but you also include the information like how how you should measure yourself or how you should read the size chart super well. So you try to always go over the same kind of information to make sure that you are reaching as many people as possible. But in the end, I mean, if customers are just like not reading, it's like, it shouldn't be like a big percentage uh, who are leaving that kind of reviews. If, if it's a big percentage, then, then there is probably a lot of room for improvement in your listing page. But a little bit, it's always like super normal to have. But I think uh, I, I just had two experiences recently when I was purchasing or wanted to purchase something on Amazon. So there was, I was looking for a tripod for the camera and uh, there was a nice tripod, which I think I liked, but for me, it was important the minimum height it can uh, achieve. What is the minimum? And uh, all the, you know, sizes, as you say, Megalites was written, but it was written in inches and it was <laughs> listing in the European uh, Amazon marketplace. And I have no idea what is one inch. Well, I, I could like two and a half centimeters is one inch, but I'm not going to now calculate. I don't have mm -hmm. a feeling. So I even wrote to that seller, like I said, what's the size? And they wrote, I said, write me in centimeters. And of mm -hmm. course it was Chinese seller. So I got reply after like next day and uh, it was too slow for me. And mm -hmm. another example was we recently wanted to buy an MP3 player uh, at home and uh, it was in the listing, it's for the kid. So in the listing, it was looking like nice MP3 player. And I was comparing that MP3 player with my previous ones in, in the size. And then when we got it, it was like three times smaller, like very small one. <laughs> and uh, then I looked at the pictures. Yes, in the pictures they show, you know, that you can clip it to, to your, you know, clothes or something. But there was no really, and there was, of course, written six centimeters, like height of that. So it's like very small, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to now imagine what is this number about. So it mm -hmm. would be nice to have a picture in the listing where maybe a palm of the person having that so that you have an idea some so sometimes yeah for sure i was not reading i was like mm -hmm. just uh, looking at the pictures the same with a tripod and the tripod measurements were in the pictures but i wanted centimeters mm -hmm. and so sometimes it's important how you communicate this information. Mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's really good that you brought that example because actually um like with customer support and amazon you actually have to craft everything in the way that the customer shouldn't need to contact you especially with like negative emotions or negative um experiences but the thing is whenever they write to you try to take everything out of that connection point because when you already get the person writing to you what you want to use that uh, as an opportunity to get a positive review because otherwise um, you should have your listing optimized in a way that they 
don't have to ask additional questions, for example, about the measurement units or the height or the size or, or anything. So I think our um, the Stellar Fest Online is a really good place to come as well because a lot of different experts uh, cover all the different parts uh, of listing optimization as well, from like uh, the written part, the bullets, also the visual part, from the photos, from the EBC content, because there are tons of ways how to really craft your listing in a really good way. And uh, all those experts are sharing their tips and hacks. So it's definitely really valuable information to both beginner sellers, but also for uh, experienced sellers. Right, right. Margaret is saying another one is not as described on website. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Okay, so let's talk about Seller Fest then. Um, so, Augustas, do you want to tell us what this uh, exciting event is all about? And you're doing a virtual event after almost two years, right? Yes, yes. So, as I said in the introduction, four years ago, I started with virtual summits, and this is what I was doing for for probably two and a half years. And then my passion was in-person events, and due to obvious circumstances we cannot do in-person events so i still wanted to do some kind of an event and give exposure to the experts and this is what we were doing in the last two months producing sellerfest.online and but follow the links of megla in the description to join this event of course and uh, in this uh, this is so far the biggest by the amount of speakers uh, it's uh, oh probably 47 or 48 I lost count and uh, what we try to make it differently is we try to bring a lot of new names which are not known in the industry and uh, kind of to give opportunity for them to be known and to share their knowledge and uh, for Amazon sellers also to get an overview what else is available in the market in this industry because there are of course we will have of course some regular speakers uh, to say like w which appear in many other places but uh, i always try to kind of bring new names into the into the world uh, what else um, we will have a lot of this time we are structuring this virtual summit more like a not like a course but it has a clear seven modules so there will be seven days of content each day you will get about six or seven presentations to watch and it's free event we should mention that um, every presentation you can watch for 24 hours whenever it's released so each day you are receiving different module uh, we will start with product sourcing where megla will be speaking and uh, product selection then next modules will be about product launching and marketing then goes uh, you know amazon advertising then we will go to the next level where we will talk about business growth and management so uh, what whatever you know you if you don't like uh, amazon advertising if it, it's not interesting for you you can just skip that day if you want so this is what we try to structure. It was quite hard sometimes to uh, fill up the gaps, or especially Amazon advertising, we had to refuse probably five extra applications <laughs> because <laughs> there are so many advertising specialists and tools who want to speak. But it was fun. And uh, yeah, if you haven't watched video, I don't know, yeah, people can go to Orange Click's website, uh, YouTube channel and search for a video from Seller Fest Online bloopers. So we released a few days ago. It was very funny. So you can see we had also some fun recording interviews. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And Lisette, of course, has her dance moves there. Yep, yep. I won't show it right now. So you have to go to YouTube and check that move out. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So yeah, from my, my side, uh, as I help Augustus with the interviews, I would uh, bring out two things. I hope I remember the second one after I finish with the first one. <laughs> so the first one is that, um, and this um, summit is actually uh, coming in a really good timing because, um, first of all, uh, all the sellers, <laughs> thanks, Augustus, for holding the finger. <laughs> first of all, um, you can take everything what you hear from these uh, presentations and apply it to your business already for the quarter uh, fourth, which we are all already into. So you can take the most out of this end of the year and you have the chance to make it the best uh, last quarter you have ever had. Secondly, it's also a perfect timing when you should start to, no, that's still the first one. <laughs> Secondly, it's uh, it's still, um, 
it's also a good time to start preparing for the next year. So what I suggest to do is that even take your team together, have like a team building the days during this virtual summit because you can watch the videos together, you can discuss everything you hear afterwards, you can make notes together, you can make uh, you can bring out the things you would like to have or apply to your business next year and you can start working on this plan already this year because if it's already first of january it's too late to to plan like the first quarter so you should do it right now and now the second thing i wanted to add um as i was helping to conduct the interviews is that um what i really uh, liked about the interviews and what i'm really excited about others to hear is that um these experts are providing a lot of detailed information because I know I, I'm a lot of uh, I'm following a lot of like videos and channels myself, and I always like when experts share like actionable tips or like a structure you could follow. So after you finish like watching the video, you can go straight to your own business and apply the steps. You can watch the video again and and do it everything for your own business, and you can start improving your listings and your ads like from from the very first day. So that's really awesome to hear. And uh, also I think all the new faces are bringing a lot of value on the table as well. So definitely I would recommend to, to give the opportunity to the ones who you haven't listened before and to really hear what they have to say. Awesome, that sounds really exciting for sure. I have signed up, looking forward to watching some of the presentations. So guys, definitely uh, check out the summit, Seller Fest. You can see the link in the description in this post, wherever you're watching, whether it's on LinkedIn or Facebook, check out uh, the event, sign up, it's free. So all videos are available for 24 hours. And then there is also an all access pass that you can get that gives you access to all of the videos later, but it is a free event initially. Cool. Okay, thank you so much, Augustas and Lisette, for coming on and sharing all of this great information and wish you all the very best for Seller Fest. And hope thank to you see very you much. Well. Thank in you for having us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hope to see you in an in person event soon. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye bye, Megan. Bye. 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 <laughs>